Testing, testing, testing. I'd just like to thank everybody to come here to our annual uh, Veterans Day celebration. Uh, give our students a chance to honor you for your service and those who are not here. Um, I'd also like to uh, wish the uh, United States Marine Corps a belated happy birthday. Yesterday was your 244th year of faithful service. Hurrah. I'd like to start off with introducing our superintendent, Mr. Adams. He has a few words to say. Thank you. I just want to welcome everybody here today and first of all say thanks to our band, choir, and students and to our student body for being a part of this. But mostly and mainly, I want to thank the veterans and their families that are here for the service they've given, for the time they spent, so that we have the freedom and all the many things that we do and we can assemble like this and we don't even understand all the luxuries we have in this world because we're so used to it. And it's thanks to people like this that have done it in the past. I'd like to thank Mr. Marisek for getting the program ready and help putting it on. I hope this is a great day for you. Every day we welcome you at our school, that this is your special day, one of our favorite of the year. Thank you so much for being here. At this time, if we could all stand for the national anthem.
1776, Patriots created a document that would forever define who we are as Americans. Here in part is what they wrote. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creators with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Civil War marked a new era in the struggle for freedom, and a nation mourned for those who sacrificed their lives. Listen to the words of Abraham Lincoln, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. John F. Kennedy proclaimed, Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardships, support any friend, oppose any foe, to assure the survival and the success of liberty. This much we pledge, and more. our troops and God bless the United States of America. Okay, and now Macy Edwards will uh, introduce our speaker for the day. Next to me, I have James Pratt. James is a legacy life member of Garland Memorial VFW, post 5067 in Garland. James served in the U.S. Army from September 1966 to September 1969. He earned his eligibility in the VFW while serving in South Vietnam from January 1969 to September 1969, and then he joined post 5076 in March of 1992. James has held many positions in the VFW, some of which include All-State, All-American Post Commander, 
district commander, which includes Dallas and Rockwall counties, state deputy inspector, national deputy chief of staff, and currently serves as post 5076 as senior vice commander and judge advocate. Please welcome James Pratt. Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome my fellow veterans. Welcome home. Thank you uh, for having me here today. It's, uh, it's really my honor to do this. Uh, I enjoy talking to groups such as this. So without further ado, we'll get into this. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely sing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, and saw sunsets glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders field. This was written by uh, Major John McCrae, medical officer, Canadian Army, December 8th, 1915. Shortly after World War I, Madam E. Gruen, founded, founder of the American and French Children's League, became concerned that the free world was forgetting too soon those sleeping in Flanders Field, and decided on the Buddy Poppy, the most appropriate memorial flower. Buddy Poppy. Gruen began to attend servicemen's organizations requesting to enact the resolution to be resolved that every member, if possible, in his or her family shall wear a silk red poppy. From its inception, the Buddy Poppy program was held, has helped the veterans of foreign wars lived up to its motto, to honor the dead by helping the living. The Buddy Poppy small and red flower, symbolic of the bloodshed set, shed in World War I by millions of Allied soldiers in defense of freedom, became the trademark of the VFW. Today, VFW buddy poppies are assembled by disabled, needy, and aging veterans in VA hospitals and domiciles across the country and are sold to VFW posts and their auxiliaries. The little red flower is then distributed among our communities to perpetuate the memory of deceased veterans and members of the armed forces and to, comfort and to comfort survivors. The minimal assessment to VFW Post provides compensation to the veterans and in maintaining state and national veterans rehabilitation and service programs and partially supports the VFW National Home for Orphans, Widows, and Widowers of our nation's veterans. I'll get back to the National Home in a few minutes. In February 1924, the VFW registered the name Buddy Poppy with the U.S. Patent Office. No other organization, firm, or individual can legally use the name Buddy Poppy. Right, now, let me ask you a question. How many of you perceive the VFW as a place where old vets go to drink a cold beer, tell war stories, play dominoes, shuffleboard, or whatever? Well, I'll tell you, you're exactly right. But it's the same old vets that visit ailing comrades at home in rehab centers assisted living communities, nursing homes, and hospitals. They take their comrades to get groceries, to doctor's appointments, chemo and radiation treatments, and every once in a while are asked to conduct a funeral service. 
I'm going to give you a little history of the VFW and what the VFW does for veterans. So maybe you will have a better understanding of what the VFW is all about. This is what I call the Baker's Dozen. Veterans of three units, the 17th U.S. Infantry, 1st Colorado, and 28th Infantry Regiments would return home to form separate, separate veterans organizations in different states at varying times. But within 14 years, they would come together to create the Veterans of Foreign Wars. On the evening of September 28, 1899, 13 men gathered in a tailor shop at 286 Main Street in Columbus, Ohio. They were all veterans of the U.S. 17th Infantry Regiment who had fought in Cuba during the Spanish-American War. The war had formally ended 13 months earlier. This baker's dozen of veterans gathered to remember their comrades killed in action, to see what they could do for the living, and to recall shared events of then the most popular war in American history. It all began with that meeting in Columbus, and a man on a bicycle, James C. Putnam, pedaled through Columbus neighborhoods, tracking down former members of the disbanded 17th Infantry Regiment to enlist them in a new cause, the creation of a veterans organization to look after their interests. If it were not for these 13 men, would we have a veterans of foreign wars? Maybe, maybe not. If it were not for these 13 men, would we have the benefits we have today? Maybe, maybe not. Thanks to the Baker's Dozen, who had the vision and courage to begin what is now the world's largest combat organization, Veterans of Foreign Wars United States of America. The Veterans of Foreign Wars United States, a national association of men and women who are soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen, served this nation in wars campaigns and expeditions on foreign soil or in hostile waters is federally chartered corporation. Now some of you guys have heard this part before. The purpose of this corporation shall be fraternal, patriotic, historical, charitable, and educational to preserve and strengthen comradeship among its members, to assist worthy comrades to perpetuate the memory and history of our dead and to assist the widows and orphans to maintain true allegiance to the government of the United States of America and fidelity to its constitution, to foster true patriotism, to maintain and extend the institutions and American freedom, and to preserve and defend the United States from all her enemies. National Headquarters, VFW, is located in Kansas City, Missouri, with an office in Washington, Washington D.C. Our current Commander-in-Chief is William Smits. He was a Navy Corpsman in Vietnam. Makes his home in New York. The Kansas City office is responsible for administrative and day-to-day -day operations. The 74 400 posts and 1.6 million members. This is a daunting task, but they do a great job. Every state is called it a department. Example, Veterans of Foreign Wars, the United States of America, Department of Texas. Texas headquarters is in Austin. Our state commander is Keith King. The state is divided into 24 districts, with each district having a district commander within each district or individual post, and each having a post commander. Currently, Texas has about 235 posts with a combined membership of about 75,000 people. And by the way, the oldest post in Texas is in San Antonio, post 76. 
It was chartered June the 15th, 1917. You have probably guessed the D.C. office is, a, is our political side. The people who work there keep a vigilant eye on bills that affect our veterans. The, the commander in chief speaks regularly with different communities, different committees that have an impact on the service and benefits of our veterans. These are formal meetings, but behind the scenes there are people who talk with people who could have an impact on something that could either help or hurt the well-being of our vets. I mentioned a little while ago about the Buddy Poppies in the National Home. The idea for a National Home was first planted in 1923 when the military order of the Cootie presented the concept to the VFW at its national convention. Members of the VFW embraced the idea of a home for children and families of veterans and the VFW National Home for Children was born. Million, millionaire cattleman Corey Spencer came to the rescue. He had 472 acres of land near Eaton Rapids, Michigan, known as the Grand River Stock Farm. He wanted to make it a gift to the VFW. Since its founding, the VFW National Home has grown from an old farmhouse to a sprawling campus with quiet tree-lined streets that connect 42 single-family homes. It has a community center, chapel, guest lodge, child care center, playgrounds, and rec recreational facilities. These homes are sponsored by different states or departments. The BFW Department of Texas sponsors one of these homes. Money is raised by each of the 235 posts and sent to department headquarters in Austin to see that our home is kept in A1 condition. Now, I mentioned about the coo cooties. What's a cootie? Okay. It's an auxiliary order of the VFW. There are many members who perform duties involving the aid, hospitalized veterans, and those who are sick or injured, providing v blood, visitations, clothing, and entertainment at VA medical centers and other non-VA facilities, such as nursing home and civilian hospitals. Nearly every, as far as I know, every state has something similar to what Texas has. But what I'm going to go on forward here with is what Texas does. The Texas VFW Foundation. It's veterans helping veterans. After all, who better understands the sacrifices made on a daily basis by military veterans and their families? The Texas Foundation was started specifically to address the needs of Texas military forces, personnel, and Texas veterans. The purpose of the Texas VFW Foundation is to assist disabled and needy veterans and their families. They do this by promoting programs that raise awareness and educate the public about the sacrifices made by American veterans and the unique and special needs resulting from their service. They help service personnel weather long deployments, provide relief in emergency financial situations, assist with medical claims related to medical services, facilitate employment assistance and job training, offer scholarships to children of veterans, and provide disaster relief funds, and much more. When the troops come home, the parades are over, and the troops lay down their arms to re-enter society. They risk everything to protect. That is when they need our help the most. Yet all too often, they are forgotten, except for two holidays out of the year, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Veterans Assistance Program. Thanks to our veterans, every war has an end. 
However, many veterans suffer physical and mental anguish from their war experiences for decades after the guns go quiet. The Texas VFW Veterans Assistance Program was established to provide financial, financial grants to veterans to assist with basic life-sustaining necessities such as food, clothing, and shelter. This fund also helps veterans with, with uh, representation in obtaining earned entitlements and benefits for housing, education, medical costs that they have earned through the military service. Unmet needs. Texas service members and their families who are currently or have been on active duty within the last three years who face financial hardship as a result of military service that is no fault of their own are eligible for a financial assistance grant up to $2,500. And they have a deal called Operation Uplink. It provides service personnel an opportunity at least once a month to, to call home for free while deployed overseas and talk as long as they like to as many people as they like. And one of our big sponsors this program is Sports Clips. Get your hair cut or Sports Clips. They, nay, they donate a portion of every haircut to the unmet needs. And over the last several years, they have donated hundreds of thousands of dollars the Operation Uplink. So if you need a haircut, go see Sports Clips. We have a disaster relief. Tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, drought, brush fires, all disasters that can have monumental consequences for veterans, especially disabled veterans, on a fixed income. They can be devastating. Texas VFW Foundation provides grants to veterans and their families to offset expenses related to these events. Remember a few years ago, uh, the fires they had outside of uh, Austin and San Antonio? There was a lot of veterans that lost some of their property out there, houses, whatever. This disaster relief fund helped them. The United States is divided into 22 regions. This is called the Veterans Integrated Service Network. This also includes American Samoa, Guam, Philippines, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Each region covers multiple states and parts of other adjoining states. Texas is covered by three regions. 16 on the east, 17 through the center, and 18 on the western part of the state. And each region is divided into systems. There's a hospital, outpatient clinics, community-based clinics, and vet centers assigned to each system. From June the 1st to September 30th, VA completed more than 19 million veterans appointments in the facilities and made nearly 1.1 million authorizations for veterans to receive care in the private sector. Several years ago, the VFW fought and received a cabinet position for the Veterans Health Care. It's now Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Texas veterans that are deemed 100% disabled pay no property tax. Texas has passed a bill, that was actually passed in, in 2015, when a vet passes, the exemption will be passed to, to the spouse. But if the spouse moves or remarries, the exemption is terminated. Veterans Affairs and Veterans Services. Each week, a bus leaves VA hospital in Dallas full of ambulatory patients manned by VFW and auxiliary volunteers. They will visit one of the many VFW posts in the area where they will be treated to a continental breakfast 
Af afterwards, they are welcome to use the pool tables, dart boards, jukebox, and shuffleboard. Only soft drinks, coffee, and tea, and juices are allowed for the visiting vets. A nice lunch of the post shooting is served, and bingo, and bingo games are played. When they leave, they are given a goodie bag full of things they can actually use, usually personal hygiene item, items. The VFW post picks up the vet, picks up the tab. The vets pay nothing. Then we have what is called a fair day. The first Thursday uh, of the state fair is what we call Veterans Day at the fair. Buses loaded with veterans from VA facilities at Bonham, Fort Worth, and Dallas are brought to the fair. The patients are escorted and if in wheelchairs pushed through the fairgrounds by VFW and auxiliary members. It's usually a lunch of brisket, sausage with all the trimmings. It's served to the patients. The meats and side dishes are bought, prepared, and donated by VFW Post and the auxiliaries. The vet pays for nothing. We have what to call a Veterans Resource Center. The center is managed by the nonprofit Homeless Veterans Services of Dallas Incorporated. Now, this is, this is a shame here. Veterans make up 13% of the homeless population in Dallas and Collin counties. The center opened more than six years ago, an old U.S. Army Reserve Center. The nearby Dallas VA Medical Center obtained the building to provide space for services. Now volunteers, a lot of which are VFW and auxiliary members, work to connect veterans, homeless or not, to benefits, jobs, counseling, housing. There are also recreational spaces such as weight room, pool tables, television, lounge chairs. There's a laundry room where they can go in and do their laundry. Ken Watterson, the president of the center, a former Marine who served in Vietnam, he and fellow Vietnam veterans started 11 years ago when they began with a van program to find and aid Iraqi war veterans living on the streets. Since the opening of the center six years ago, they have served over 12,000 veterans. The center aids about 60 homeless veterans each day looking for food, housing, and jobs. Our VFW posts have annual food and clothing drives to donate to the center, especially winter clothing and sleeping bags. Jobs. A lot of veterans need jobs. Job fairs are held several times a year around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Companies and manufacturers, big and small, are seeking employees. Almost all of the time, a vet will be given first chance. You can be sure members of the local VFW post will be present with a booth of their own to aid the vets any way they can. I read in the paper recently that there are 250,000 job openings for manufacturing and trades in Dallas Fort Worth area, most starting at about $25 an hour. Dallas Community, Dallas Community College District, they have seven campuses. They have a program where a vet can receive an associate's degree in 18 months and a trade certificate in 10 months. And, and certain job skills they obtain in the military could count as hours toward their their degree. Last but not least, the post. Among the requirements each post has to do is set down by the national bylaws to keep its charter or dues reserve fund. Uh, dues reserve fund. If you have a comrade in your post that might be down on their luck, lost their job or whatever, they can't financially pay for their dues, 
the dues reserve fund, that post will pay for their dues. Veterans Relief Fund. Again, if a veteran should happen to lose his job, gets ill, can't work, uh, he needs groceries, he needs a uh, utility bill paid, whatever. The post has a relief fund. They can help that veteran pay his bills. Uh, did you know that the VFW is responsible for the Star Spangled Banner being our national anthem and having Loyalty Day being put on the calendar? So in closing, hope I've given you an idea of how the VFW and its auxiliaries have helped and are helping our veterans. Everything I have talked about today is due directly or indirectly to the efforts of the veterans of the foreign wars to help our nation's warriors. I heard somewhere that a good speaker should be three things. Be bright, be brief, be gone. Thanks for having me today. God bless you, our troops, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Pratt, for being our speaker. And now we'll go with our bell, bell ceremony. Students and all those who, students and all those able, please stand to honor our fallen soldiers who have graduated from Farmsville ISDs. These individuals pay the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our country and all it stands for. World War II. Lieutenant Jack K. Bumpus, Jr., United States Air Corps, class of 1932. Sergeant Wallace Earl Becknell, United States Air Corps, class of 1933. Private Landrum W. Leach, United States Army, class of 1933. Petty Officer Billy Bain Honecker, United States Navy, class of 1935. Sergeant Nolan D. Thomas, United States Marine Corps, class of 1935. First Lieutenant Ray W. Hensley, United States Air Corps, class of 1936. Seaman Raymond Thompson, United States Navy, class of 1936. Sergeant William Aston Carver, United States Air Corps, class of 1937. Technical Sergeant Joe Everett Carver, Jr., United States Air Corps, class of 1938. Staff Sergeant Martha Parnell Milliken, United States Air Corps, class of 1938. Private James W. Montgomery, United States Army, class of 1939. Private Walter Max Glass, Jr., United States Army, class of 1940. Staff Sergeant Thomas L. Reich, United States Air Corps, class of 1940. Private Cleo W. Stanford, United States Air Corps, class of 1941. Private Horace Edwin Yeary, Jr., United States Army, class of 1942. And in the Vietnam War, Private Thomas Glenn Carraway, United States Army, class of 1964.
This concludes our ceremony. Uh, thank you all for being here, and thank you to all the teachers and the students that helped make this available or possible. Thank you. Stay fast for a second. Okay, students, you need to go back to second period. Thank you. <laughs>